Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there's going to be something that's going to be shared that's going to be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody. We thank God for you. For those tuning in, our Spirit of Fire Nation, we just thank God for you. We want you to go ahead and share this right now with as many people as you can. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a good one today. I believe that this is gonna help you. This is gonna encourage you. This is gonna strengthen you to begin to increase in your life in different areas. And so I'm ready to jump into this thing. If this is your first time uh, tuning in uh, to a message here, we just wanna welcome you. We wanna acknowledge you and just tell you, thank you for showing up today. There are many other platforms that you could be on but you're tuning in today. So lock in, stay locked in, stay locked in. I believe that you're going to learn something that today. You're going to grow. You're going to increase all of our partners and supporters. Listen, text somebody, share with somebody. Listen, share this video as many as you can. Go to the YouTube channel, subscribe, click the notifications button, do all of that stuff. Go ahead and get ready. Today is Palm Sunday. Uh, we are just celebrating and getting ready for what's called Holy Week and and we just thank God for it, for the entrance of the Lord Jesus, that triumphal entrance and him being prepared for his death, burial and resurrection. And next Sunday, we are going to be in person. So I want you all to get ready. 1.30 p.m. We will be in person. Uh, we wanted to switch it up this um, this month so that we could be in person for Resurrection Sunday, the Easter uh, holiday. So we just wanted to let you all know that. So we just thank God for you. That's why we switched it up. I wanted us to be in person to celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. I didn't want to do it virtual. Uh, we're still going to be online, so don't, don't worry. We're still going to be online as well when we do that. All right, y'all. We're going to pray. We're going to jump into this today, and I'll share some, um, some announcements later on. Um, but let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords, think to my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach your holy written word reverently. We thank you right now for every ear being anointed to hear, every heart being open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. Father, we don't take this time lightly. We do cover the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration as well. We thank you that each and every person will hear and receive what's needed for their lives. I pray for strength and encouragement, for understanding, for wisdom and knowledge, a good understanding of your word. And so we give you praise in advance for it. Now, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you as the great teacher, the great comforter the one who's ready to give us peace and insight. I pray right now that you strengthen me with might by your spirit and my inward man, that you strengthen my body and my mind to articulate the mysteries of the kingdom of God. I pray that this will transform and change lives for the better. Father, we give you glory in advance and we give you praise for it in Jesus name. Amen and amen. All right. As always, I like my intercessors praying for me while I'm teaching and sharing today. Um, I'm, I'm sensing something here. I'm, I'm excited about this. I, I sense um, a level of growth, expansion, um, explosion in your life for good. Um, I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to strengthen you today. We are dealing in our series, dealing with the subject of stewardship. I like to call it principle and power. Uh, when you begin to walk in the principles of God, then you walk in the power. It produces the power of God in your life. And so God has been dealing with me about this subject of stewardship. And as I begin to just work on, even for my notes for today, um, more and more is coming up in me. I'm, I'm strengthened. I'm getting excited about it. Um, and I'm excited for you as well, because you need to get ready. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm stick as, as much as I can. I'm trying to be disciplined to get out what I need to get out and then let the Holy Ghost just flow with this thing because it's, it's stirring up in me. I can sense it already. I can sense something churning in me. And I want to read this to you that your life 
your entire life. I remember waking up the other morning and I began to hear these words in my spirit. And the funny thing is, I didn't realize that I had already written it down in the previous message that I had taught on years ago, dealing with stewardship. But this same thing was ringing in my heart when I woke up. And it says, and this is how I was hearing it, um, that your entire life is a stewardship test. Your life, I want you to be a good steward over every area of your life and, and encourage the people to be good stewards over every area of their life. This life is about stewardship and rulership is awaiting those who will pass the test of stewardship. And see, when you are walking as a steward, you must prove yourself as a good steward and pass the test of faithfulness. When we talk about faithfulness, being trustworthy, being reliable, being sure, being loyal, being true to a standard so that you can move into rulership. Because sometimes what can happen is what, what we call faithful can just be maintaining versus advancing. And God always wants us to increase, to be fruitful, multiply, subdue, replenish, have dominion. Um, to, so you got to be faithful in doing that and consistently reaching out to do more. And you got to realize that a, a steward is somebody who is appointed to manage, oversee, or to supervise the affairs of another. And a manager is a person who conducts business on the behalf of another individual. And so when God has planted us here, he's planted us in planet Earth. He placed man in planet Earth in the Garden of Eden to steward what he created and started. And so it's our job to begin to move it forward, to increase it, to advance it. So whatever God gives you, wherever he plants you, he says, I want you to steward over that. And I want you to grow from where you currently are. There are some people who have now walked in regret because maybe you mismanaged the season of your life that you wish you had that time back. But the reality is you can't go back in time, but you can start from where you are. And so God is saying, I want you to begin to be encouraged that you can begin to move further forward from where you currently are. Your life is not over. You still breathing. You still here. Whether you in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. He says you can still advance no matter what stage of life that you're in. You can always become better and move forward. Somebody may say, you know what? I regret not um, investing for my retirement when I was in my 20s and 30s. But now I'm at the age of retirement or retire. And God, how can you take? He says, I can take whatever's in your hands and increase it. I can take the social security paycheck that's not enough and turn it into more than enough. He says, I can do that. I am the God of more than enough. So no matter where you are, I can take you to another level, another season and another place. And so now I just need for you to be a good steward over what I put into your hands. Now, I want you to, to begin to go with me to the book of Luke. I'm going to start here real quick. The book of Luke chapter 16. The book of Luke chapter 16. As, as I was meditating, this is what meditation on the word will do. When you meditate that word and that word is a seed that gets on the ground in your heart and it starts producing. When you start meditating on things, when you meditate on a particular topic or subject, then there will be answers that come up in you of things that come up in you pertaining to what you're meditating on that will provide the advancement, the manifestation of it. So whatever it is. So as I was meditating on stewardship, there were things coming up in me that God was dealing with me about, whether it's to, to something new to implement or to go back to something I let go of in the past and says, I want you to get back on track because that was a good form of stewardship, but you let it go and get back to doing what I told you to do. And see, if you get back on track, I can advance you. And only then will the quantum leaps of faith take place because I'll never advance you past your ability to manage or to steward where you heading. So I want you to get ready. I want you to start putting things back into place, put things back into position. Well, whatever it is, God is saying this to you too. There may have been standards that you set, that you let go of in your life. God says, reinstitute that standard. Step your game up now and watch what I begin to do. I can do it. I want you to know something that somebody out there, I want to encourage you. You can do it. 
You can do it. I know you've been downtrodden. I know something's been hitting you. And all of a sudden, Satan has been trying to bombard you with stuff in your mind to get you off course. But I'm here today in the name of Jesus. And I speak and I command that devil to get off your thinking. I command that stuff to come off your mind where it's beating you up, holding you down, making you think that, no, you done wasted time. You ain't worth nothing. That you've been a bad steward. God ain't, he don't love you. You'll never get past where you you currently are the devil is a liar in Jesus name and I'm gonna tell you that now yeah uh-huh uh-huh it's okay watch this we're gonna we're gonna hit this thing we're gonna hit this thing today because I felt this thing in my spirit I sense it I sense it this is something that's gonna break off but it's also going to encourage while you just sitting here listening, stuff is going to get in you. Wisdom is going to get in you. The word's going to get in you and stuff going to come off of you. I come against right now condemnation in Jesus name because condemnation will rob you of good stewardship because you are still mourning the past. You won't manage what's in your hands now because mourning and condemnation is associated in grief. The spirit of grief is associated with loss what you don't have anymore, things that you lost, whether it's an opportunity, whether it was money. God says you can steward what you currently have and I can grow what you currently have. Watch this. You can grow what you currently have and become better at what you're doing right now. All right. Come on. Amen. Now the book of Luke. Come here. Come here. Let's let's go here now. Let's, let's, dig, let's dig into something here. The book of Luke um, 16. I'm starting at verse 1. Now, this is out of the New Living Translation, and it just gives it, it gives it such a plain vernacular. Um, I want us to dig into this there, and I got some points I want to make. Um, I don't plan on being too long with you today, but I just want to, I want to really dig something in. I want to get something across to you. Jesus told this story to his disciples. There was a certain rich man. So this is an actual account because he says it was a certain rich man who had a manager handling his affairs. So you got a rich man. He has this manager handling his affairs. One day a report came that the manager was wasting his employer's money. So the employer called him in and said, what's this that, that I hear about you? He says, get your report in order because you're going to be fired. <laughs> he says, OK, this is interesting. He just he heard what was happening. He calls him in. He says, give me an account. Give me a report because I'm getting ready to put you out of your stewardship in your managerial position. The manager thought to himself, now what? He says, my boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig ditches and I'm too proud to beg. How does that sound like a lot of people? Maybe you passed, you felt like you passed a prime in your life, whereas you don't have the strength that you did in your younger years to get certain things done. Somebody may be in that place and it's almost like you get tired thinking about what you got to do. God says, I'm going to give you strength to get the job done. That's a whole nother thing. Hold on one second. I'm coming back to that. He says here, he says, I don't have strength to dig ditches and I'm too proud to beg. He said, ah, I know how to ensure that I'll have plenty of friends who will give me a home when I'm fired. He says, so he invited each person who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much do you hold on? The man replied, I owe, him, uh, I owe him 800 gallons of olive oil. So the manager told him, take the bill and quickly change it to 400 gallons. And how much do you owe my employer? He asked the next man. I owe him 1,000 bushels of wheat was the reply. Here the manager said, take the bill and change it to 800 bushels. The rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. He called him a dishonest rascal. He said, for being so shrewd. So he was a shrewd businessman, shrewd in his business dealings. And it is true that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than the children of life. Now, let me stop here. I had a question in my mind as I was reading this. I'm like the same hustle he had and the same shrewdness when he got fired is the same shrewdness he could have used to be faithful in what he was called to do. It was like sometimes you might feel like that. That it was like you waited too long to do what you knew that you were supposed to do, but you didn't do it. Whether it's through laziness, whether it's through some, whatever the case is. 
It was like, now it's almost like when the fire is lit up under you, now it's the motivation for you to do something about it. But God is saying, I don't want you to just be, I don't want you to be motivated by bad circumstances any longer. I want you to be motivated by an internal fire or desire to please me and to do what I called you to do. That should be the motivation behind what you do to honor God and to please him and to fulfill your assignment, to fulfill your call, to fulfill the thing that God called you to do. What motivates you? What is going to get you going after all is this, after all you going through, if that hadn't motivated you by now, what will motivate you? Where is your motivation? Where is your desire? See, do you have the fear of the Lord? Do you have that thing that's pushing you to do what you got to do that makes you get up when you don't feel like getting up? That causes you to begin to discipline yourself because in order to be a good steward, you're going to have to be disciplined. You're going to have to be a person who's going to have to be a self-motivator and not depend always on external stimuli to get you going, but have an internal desire and fire to do what's right because it's right and to do it right. I know stuff hits you. I know that you're at a different stage in your life. I know that maybe physically you're dealing with something. And when you wake up and the pain hits you and that pain is causing you not to even want to do, it's not that you don't want to do it. It's just that pastor, I'm just hurting. I'm just tired. It's so much I've been dealing with. You don't know what I've been dealing with from the job to the kids to just the regret in my mind. And you've worn yourself out thinking about everything you got to do. So you already tired before you get up to do anything. Am I talking to anybody out there right now? Sometimes you get so tired and worn out thinking about what you got to do. It causes your motivation to come down. So now it's like through paralysis by analysis, so busy thinking about everything that you do nothing. And then a day turns into a week, a week turns into a month, a month turns into a year. And you will say to yourself, if I would have just done this consistently one day at a time, I would be further along that if now God says this, even though it might have taken five years, it may still take five years, but at least you get started. At least you start from where you are and then depend on me for the motivation or the boost that you need. This is where the acceleration, this is where the supernatural comes in. When you begin to walk by his principles consistently and you make a decision and God sees that you made your mind up that come hell or high water, you're going to do what God told you to do. Now God says, I can trust you now. I can trust that you're going to stick with this thing. So now I'm going to add a boost to you and I'm going to bring Bring something across your table that you could not have done in your in your ability alone that I'm going to come and help you. He says, but what I need you to do is to do the part you know to do and I'll handle the rest. Do what you know to do and I'll handle the rest. Let's go back here where we in verse uh, nine. He says, here's the lesson here. Here's the lesson. He says, use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, then they will welcome you to an eternal home. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. So now let's go back here. He says, I need you to understand this because this here is about management. This whole thing is about management and you must manage well what you have. So you need to focus on how do I manage and steward properly where I currently am and to do the thing. Because when I look at this account, when I first read it, it is not the most exciting account to me because now it's about this guy who mismanaged what he had, got fired. Now he had to go quickly and he had to scrape and hustle to kind of set things up because he was being fired out of the position that he currently had. And so my thing is, God, I don't want to be fired out of my position. I want to show myself faithful. I don't want you to have to find another because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And so now I got to do is, and sometimes it's like, okay, God, 
What do you want me to do now? Unless you watch this, unless you give me something else, I'm going to go back to the last thing that I heard from you. And faithfulness is being consistent in the last thing that God instructed you to do until you get further instructions. So if he just says, be faithful and teach here, if he says, be faithful and serve here, if he says, be faithful and do this thing here, just be consistent, be the best at what you do and develop yourself to the point where you are skilled at that thing, that you are master of that thing and say, okay, God, whenever you're ready to shift me and that pivot moment comes in my life, then I'm ready to move with you. Okay. So be faithful, calm down. Trust yourself. If you ain't heard nothing else, do what God told you to do. Do what you know to do. Set your hands in being faithful. Set your hands in being diligent. Manage well what you have. Do business until he comes. Occupy until he comes. He already told us to go preach the gospel to all the nations of the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now watch this. Unless he gives us something else, he's already given us a basic instruction for the universal body of Christ. But now for your individual life, there may be some things God starts telling you to do. And so I want to encourage you right now. Don't worry about what's been mismanaged. Now begin to say, OK, God, one of the things you're going to have to do is begin to have a have a heart of repentance. Father, I repent for my mismanagement of that past season. Now I ask for favor. And I declare favor over my life. And Father, I thank you that you are a God who gives and grants a second chance. And so now, but watch this. He will not give you something that you are not able to manage or handle. So you need to learn because if you mismanage the season because of certain things you didn't have, I'm going to give you three key words you need to have in your life. Three key things you need to have in your life. When well, you're talking about management and stewardship, and if you're looking to now manage where you are and grow where you're from, and you're ready to do something greater, number one, you're going to need wisdom. And beside wisdom, I want you to write this down. I want you to put this down. Wisdom. And beside wisdom, I want you to write the word application. Beside the word wisdom, I want you to write, write application. Number two is knowledge knowledge. Beside knowledge, I want you to write information. And number three, I want you to write down understanding. And beside understanding, I want you to write comprehension. Okay. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. The first thing you get is knowledge or, or the information. You're going to need new information because if you didn't do what you were supposed to because of ignorance, you need some more information. You need to learn the principles of being a good steward. You need to learn how to manage what you have. You need to increase your information base. You're responsible for that. Sometimes we try to use our faith to cover our lack of ingenuity, creativity, and work ethic. The answer might be in a book, in a video, but you got to take the time to research it and administer it in your life. Okay. So let me go. Number one is information. Then number two, you need understanding. The Bible declares wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom and in all that getting, get what? Understanding. That means comprehension of the information because I can give you information, but if you don't comprehend it or understand it, then you can't move into the application of it. So God wants you to get understanding. He wants you to learn the ways of the, the area of maybe the, that you're working in. You need to learn some things. You might need to learn how to conduct business. You may need to learn the laws of the land. You may need to learn how to structure yourself. You might need to learn how to do this. You may need to learn investment tactics. You may need to learn what's a Roth IRA. You might need to learn what's a 401k. You may need to learn how to develop a 501c3. You might need to learn what an LLC and the S Corp and the C Corp is. You might need to learn these things. Okay, what are you talking about? Okay, you need to get more information and understand these things, and then you'll know how to apply it to your situation. How do you develop a trust? How do you develop this? How do you have good relationships? How do you conflict, have good conflict resolution? What You can learn these, these skill sets, but you have to do that. 
You have to do that. It's not just about sometimes we'll do things like we'll pray in the spirit or have a moment of prayer and ask God for something. But when he answers it in a way that may require us to do something. Do you follow through with it? It's, it's simple. He says this. I need you to steward what you have. And sometimes we're in information overload. And some of you may have a shelf full of books. You might have a notebook full of notes and you may have all this stuff highlighted, the Bible highlighted. Whether it's on your iPad, iPhone, you got a physical Bible. You done had, you done gone from tapes to CDs and MP3s, now videos and YouTube, where information is at the touch of your finger, the tip of your finger. But you got to stop and say, okay, God, and some of it can feel overwhelming. And sometimes this is where even scripture talks about you use what you know. And now says the Bible talks about attain the wise counsel and you'll be wise. A person who hangs with fools, you're going to be a fool too. You're going to be foolish. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Get around people with your answer. Hang around people with your answer and get away from people who have your problem. Get around. Understand. Increase. Say, okay, I need help with this. Let pride go. Because I want to be a good steward. I want to manage well what I have. I want to understand some simple things. I went back to some simple things that Bishop Fuller told us years ago in a um, CDMA meeting with pastors and leaders. And I remember typing it up. He was like, man, these notes are good. He ended up using them. He said, send them to me. And, just, and I went back and was just reading over them a couple of weeks ago. And answers, just simple answers were coming to me. Do this. Follow the instruction. Don't be the person who likes to assemble stuff, but you don't read the instructions. You're just trying to figure it out. Uh, uh He says the instructions are there. Read the instruction and start applying it step by step by step. OK, start applying it. This is watch this. God is watch this. What you're showing to God is you're proving to him that you're willing to do what's necessary to develop yourself, to increase your capacity for more. And now God says, I can trust you because he says, in order for you to receive this next level, you got to live at another level. That means you got to function at another level. That means watch this. If you, if you like being in 30, full return, then you keep doing what you're doing. But if you're looking to go to 60 and 100 fold and to float with bosses, if you're looking to do that thing the way that you are seeing it in your eye, the eyes of your understanding and in your heart, the revelation that I've given you, the vision I've given you, if you're looking to go greater, you're going to have to live greater. This is part of the stewardship test. Are you willing to get up early and go to sleep later? Are you willing to do what's necessary at time? Are you willing to write out your plan and stick with it, even though your, your whole body screaming, get off the course of the plan, but you know the plan was from God. You know the plan is good. You know the discipline that it takes. And so your body screaming, get off the regimen, get off of it. God said, uh, you stay on it because what you're doing now is you're disciplining your flesh and proving to yourself, but also showing God that you're willing to do what you need to do because you hungry for that next. I'm, I'm here to motivate you. This, this God says, stay the course. Stay the course. Don't you get off of this because I'm bringing something out of you. See, I remember being, you know, getting away from friends and wanting to go out and wanting to do this stuff. And I'm on my face before God. And then God calls me to go into ministry. And then he tells me, I want you to go into this class and take this training. And I want you to serve in youth ministry. And I want you to do this thing. And I remember getting up at 5 a.m. every morning and getting myself together and going to morning prayer and then going to work and then going to the gym at lunch and then getting off and then going to class at school. And then once I go to class and then go to a meeting here and then go serve here. And then on Sunday, go to church and serve the kids and do all this stuff and minister and train and study. And then I get a family and then I get twins and then I still got to get twins. I still, I still gotta take care of my family. I still got to work. I still got to serve. I still got to do this stuff and all this stuff. You got to know, watch this. OK, God, what's the balance now? Help me to structure the balance. Because what the Holy Spirit is going to start doing, that's good, Holy Ghost. He's going to start helping you prioritize. You're going, to, you're, going, you're going to start, you're going to start now, uh, uh, what was compartmentalizing the things. Okay. Now I want you to take care of this. I want you to do this. Stop feeling overwhelmed. Stop feeling overwhelmed and stop beating yourself up. Stop beating yourself up. Stop crying about it. You didn't cry long enough about it. 
Get rid of the tears. It's time to strengthen yourself now. Getting strong in the spirit. Now he says this, make the decision. I'm going to be with you always. Huh. I want to make a statement. Some of you are now making decisions in your life where your career, your calling is concerned. Your job is what people pay you to do, but your work is what you were born to do. Yeah, you might get that paycheck from that job, but you about to go into your true work, what you were called to do. And God wants to use that to manifest his goodness through you, to you and in you. And you about to feed off of what you've been gifted by God to do. You better hear me. Now, I'm going I'm I'm to hit some points here. I want you to roll with me. Much is attracted to the effect of management of little. Much is attracted to the effect of management of little. Start looking at what you have. Start looking at what you have. Start looking at what you have. If I can start here, then I'll do this. I'll start with this. I'll start with what's currently in my hand. I'll sow from what's currently in my hand. I'll build what's from current. Look at the resources around you. What do I have? What is God calling me to do? What is this thing? Okay, okay, this is what I can start doing little by little and be consistent with it, but look at getting better and better at it. Management is the primary goal of mankind. That's why I told you, he, he created this earth, created this garden called Eden, now created man, put him in it, and gave him responsibility to till the land. To, gave him responsibility to oversee, to now name the animals. And then he says, not good that man be alone. Then Eve came on the scene, and they were designed and created to rule and dominate together. Number two point I want to make. Number one was management is the primary goal of mankind. Number two, whatever you fail to manage, you will lose. Whatever you fail to manage, you'll lose. Now, I don't want you to walk in fear. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I ain't mad. I'm about to lose it. Um, okay. Just focus on the stewardship. Focus on making the adjustments. Because if you start getting into fear and losing something, whatever you feel going to come on you. Because if you're walking in fear, you'll start acting in fear. And when you're acting in fear, you won't do the necessary things you're supposed to do. So if you just focus on stewarding where you currently are and work on that, and I get it, it's going to mean that you're going to have to manage your mind and steward your mind and tell yourself, get yourself together. Get yourself together. You ain't got time to cry no more about it. Get up. The greater one abides in me. The greater one lives in me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God has granted me wisdom. The Holy Spirit abides in me and he teaches me all things and shows me things to come. And I maximize the, my stewardship. I maximize the resources around me. I maximize the internet. I maximize relationships and people that I know that's balling out. I maximize whoever is successful I want to be successful at. God will give you access to them. You got it. It's time for you to get off the roller coaster in your mind. And God says, I'm bringing stability to you right now. Stable mind, stable life. See, start stewarding your mind. That's good. That's it. Start stewarding your mind and everything else will start flowing. It'll start flowing. This is what I do today. God, you'll give me a plan of action. You'll give me a plan. So first things first, you know, some, it might be something simple. Let me first open up my checking account. Let me get my savings account. Let me work on developing this $1,000 emergency fund. Let me do this. Let me start working out. Let me start eating right. Okay. If, uh, okay. So I won't get overwhelmed. Let me start taking stuff out of my diet and then start introducing stuff into my diet. And now that way, okay, watch this because you want it to be sustainable. Sometimes you try to go all in all at once and then you shock your system and then you stop doing the process. Then you get frustrated because now you feel overwhelmed off of everything you're trying to do. Whereas wisdom might kick in to say, start introducing little by little, start being faithful over the little. And before you know it, you'll gain momentum and be a ruler over much. And before you know it, you started off in month one where you only lost one pound, but by month six, you now have lost 50 pounds. And so God is saying, not only are you getting your body healthy, what you also 
also did was stabilize your mind because now you realize your eating patterns was based off emotion. And then all of a sudden now you don't eat, watch this, you don't live to eat, you eat to live. And now all of a sudden now you start making decisions. You start making, you stop making impulsive purchases because now you're doing it to now sustain something that now all the time in my presence was going to sustain anyway. So once you get in my presence, it'll deal with your anxiety. It'll deal with your fear and your worry. And so now you won't make a choice that you normally would have made in an emotional state. Why? Because now my word has become the anchor to your soul. And because my word is the anchor to your soul, you start making stable decisions and those stable decisions will show me and prove to me and prove to you that you can handle what I'm about to put into your hands. Now you've been praying about it and God won't give you what you pray for. He'll give you what you can manage. And see, watch this, you're praying for it, but now the answer comes up in times of stewardship and management to see can you pass the test to handle what you've been believing for. And God is saying, I want you to begin to now make wise choices and decisions. I finished with number two. Number, um, number three, God's primary measure of trust is management. God's primary measure of trust is management. It's almost like, if I trust you, I'll give you more to do. It's like that, we know that as parents. Certain things, it's like, okay, before you ask to take over everything, do this first. Be faithful in taking out the trash. Be faithful in cleaning your room, making your bed. Be faithful in the little. Then I can trust you with more. We know it, we do it ourselves. You won't give money to people you don't trust. You won't let people use your car that you don't trust. You won't let people come into your home that you don't trust. So why do you expect God to do something different with you? Because he set this stewardship thing up. He says, now I'm going to show you some things and I'm going to, I need you to show yourself faithful over the little so then I can, you can be ruled over much. You don't start off running the fortune 500 company. You start off with one client. You be faithful to that one client. You give that one client the best. When you start off preaching, you don't start off preaching the thousands. Listen, you be faithful to that five person Bible study and you preach to them like you preaching to five million. You prepare like you preaching to them. I remember years ago, the spirit of God gave me a dream. I had a couple of dreams. One of them was I was called to this massive meeting conference. Well-known preacher invited me to preach. But while I was up there, number one, I was late getting to the event. Number two, when I looked down at my notes, my notes were all over the place. It was so unorganized. And it was like, I just looked like a fool up there. And God starts showing me, I want you to begin to now structure yourself properly, study properly, prepare properly. So that now when these moments show up, you are ready for it. Then in another, another, it wasn't a vision, it was a dream. In another dream, my notes were together, but in the midst of me getting ready to preach, a gust of wind came and blew all of my notes out and I was lost. And then he was showing me, it's not about having it on the paper, it needs to be in your heart. He was showing me these things. So no matter what situation, I'm already ready because I take that time in private when nobody is watching to develop myself. So when the public display comes, I'm ready. What are you doing in quiet moments? This shows the trustworthiness. Can he trust you? God could trust me to teach his people because he knew I wasn't going to be. He said he knew I wasn't going to be some little scoundrel. He knew I wasn't going to try to get over on people. He knew I wasn't. He knew I was going to be sincere. I was going to be honest. Even if I didn't always do things the right way just because of immaturity, my heart was right. He says, OK, I can at least get you in the right place because I know that, number one, your heart is right. I can get you the information and the skill set. Give me a person with the right heart. I can get them the information. But sometimes dealing with people who have a treacherous heart and then all of a sudden now I can't trust you. You a gossiper. You a backbiter. And now God may say he may want you ultimately to now lead and advance people. But he says you got to get your tongue under control first. You got to get your heart right. You got to get that lust thing right. Because if I put you in a position, you end up sleeping with the people you're supposed to be ministering to. 
He says, I need you to get things right on the inside of you. The stuff that we hear that comes from poor pits, it's ridiculous now. And God is saying, I need you to be a good steward. I need you to steward well. Govern yourself. Steward yourself right first. Number four, God will give more to effective management. He'll give more to effective management. Did I already read that one before? I'm going to number five. God will give more to effective management. So sometimes you're praying for more, but really the answer is manage well what you have. If you manage well and take it and say, okay, this is goes here. This does this. Okay, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to put this there. I'm going to do this. Now, all of a sudden, now, Father, I thank you for what I have, and I bless what I have. Remember Jesus? He took that two fish, five loaves. He broke it. He blessed it. I bless what I have now. I bless what I have. I bless what I have. Watch this. I speak well of what I have. That's what part of blessed means to declare over it, to speak well of it. So watch this, instead of me complaining about it, speak well of it, and Father, show me how to maximize this to get the best result that I can get off of what I have. I wanna show you that you can find me faithful. I wanna prove to you, God, because sometimes we ask the question, do we trust God? But then the question is, does God trust us? And God, I want you to see that you can trust me in this. I, I don't want to pass. I don't want to fail and flunk any more tests. I got to pass it. I got to pass. I remember years ago, years ago, I was in high school and uh, we had this um, driver's education class. And the crazy thing was in the driver's education class, in order for you um, to, to be qualified to go get your license and all this stuff, you had to take tests in this class, but you had to pass every single test. The kicker was you can take the test as many times as you wanted to in order to pass it. So what I did, because I was such a procrastinator and lazy, I kept putting it off and putting it off and waiting and waiting. Then at the end of the year, I'm trying to cram to pass all of these tests at a certain point so that I could then go and get mine. You know what happened? I ended up not passing a couple of them that if I just would have started sooner, taking my time, spread it out, manage my time well, I wouldn't have felt inundated and overwhelmed trying to do something at the last minute because I effectively did it step by step. See, maintenance is easier than repair. When you start working stuff consistently, and sometimes it's something just that simple where it won't feel overwhelming in your life if you just do things on a consistent and regular basis. And then too, if you work hard, play hard, have fun, enjoy life. Enjoy, see this is part of you enjoying the journey. This wisdom coming out, you better hear this. Listen, see, as you start working, listen, plan time to play. Listen, while you saving money, Take some of it and blow it. It's your play money. Because you've already, watch this, you've already managed your money. Okay, you may say this, okay, I'm going to tie 10%. I'm going to save 10%. Then I'm going to invest 10% or 5%. And then the rest of this goes towards bills. Or I'll say, okay, I want to live off of 50% of what I make. So if I tie 10% and I save 10%, that's 20%. Then if I take another 5% and invest it, that's 25%. And so then if I take 50% to live off, that's 75%. So that means I got 25% left over. I can up what I do in my investment and then say, okay, I got 20% more and put five more in my, in my investment portfolio and now take 20% and enjoy myself. Let me travel because what that'll do is sometimes you don't realize when you begin to play while you invested in working, it motivates you to do what you got to do to keep the thing going. And then you don't feel worn out because you just work, 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 but don't know how to relax and play and take care of yourself. Invest in you. Invest in your well-being. Invest in your rest. Get a massage. Go to the spa. Go play ball. Go travel. Go do something. Go to the movies. Get some popcorn and go by yourself. You ain't got to have a date. You ain't got to have nobody with you. Just enjoy you. Go to the park. Get a blow pop. Get you some flip flops, a kite, and just go have fun. I don't care what you do. Just go have some fun. Invest in you. That's going to be important because if you're refreshed, 
then you got more energy for your work. You better hear me. This flowing for somebody. And I need you to grab it. I need you to grab it. Then you will feel better. You won't be worn out all the time. You're just worn out. You're always tired. I'm just tired. It's time out for you to just be tired all the time. It's time to get some energy. See, for me, productivity motivates me. When I have a good meeting or a good session and getting going, oh, I'm energized. I'm ready to roll. Everybody don't function like that, but I know me. And I listen, I'll take time to do this. I'll take time to rest and relax. I'll take time. But now for me, it's a thing of don't take too much time because now you're wasting time and work you need to be doing. So now it's like it's the balance. It's the life balance of even stewardship, of taking care of yourself. Take care of one another. Take care. Sometimes, hold up, I hit a little boy. Somebody need to hear this. You are worrying about stuff and God saying it is not as bad as you think. It is not as bad as you think. This for somebody. I don't know exactly who it is. It is not as bad as you think. If you will just sit back, step back and evaluate the situation, you will realize you wearing yourself out, worrying about something that hasn't even happened. And that's called panic. That's groundless fear. There is no evidence to support why you even worrying. You better take this, man. I, I'm telling you, this is going to help you. This is going to help heal you. It's going to help deliver you. It's going to help set you free because you're so worn out. That's why you're drinking so much because you're so worn out physically. You're using wine to wind down when you need to be in the presence of God to wind down. And so you use your natural means to solve a spiritual issue. And so now all of a sudden, now that's why you're smoking the weed. You want to hit a hookah just so you can relax and so you can feel better about yourself. And God is saying, you need to remove all of that junk and see this stuff is clouding your judgment and God is saying, I need you to get in my presence so that now I can start revealing some stuff to you. You better hear me. I'm preaching better than some of y'all might be shouting. You better hear this now. God said, I'm trying to get you on point. I'm getting you ready for more. Better hear me at this next level. I told you this in the past. Your whole regimen has to change. To do something to get something you never had before, you gotta do something you never done before. That means stuff has to shift. You become settled in this new normal. And God says, I'm about to upset your daily regimen. Yeah. Don't worry, it's, it's for the good. It's for your growth. While you're doing it, see, whenever you start a new routine, you're sore. And it may hurt because you're stretching in areas that you ain't worked in a while. But God said, don't worry. Just give it time. It's going to be your new rhythm. It's going to be your new normal. And you'll become more comfortable in that. And the minute you start becoming comfortable in that level, he's going to stretch you to the next. He's about to stretch you to the next. You better hear me. This year. This year. This is the year. This is the year. The first quarter has gone. This is the year. This is the year of your redemption and turnaround in areas. This is the year. This is the year. Glory to God. This is it. This is that. This is, a, this is your acquisition year. This is your year of planning. This is why God says the strategies, the structure strategies, um, the systems, strategies and structures that's needed. This the year. This the year. You better hear me. This is the year, boo-boo. This your year. This your year. This is your year. This is your year. I, I want to speak out to somebody that I'm seeing now. <sighs> this is your year. I, I, I'm going to do it. I don't always keep stopping myself. Y'all can handle it. Bro, the Lord said this is your year. And stop second guessing yourself around other people. 
and you've asked others. And really what you've been asking for is validation and affirmation from people to, to, to solidify or validate what God has been speaking in you. He says, don't you ask another person. He says, do what I told you to do. And you're going to see it take off. You're going to see it take off. He says, you are better equipped than you even realize. You were groomed for this, the Lord is saying. And he says, the minute that you begin to speak, it's going to flow out you like water. And people are going to come to you for consultations. And you ain't going to have to keep spending money on other consultations. They're going to start consulting you. you. You better hear what I'm telling you. Thus say of the Lord. I'm going to say it just like that. That thing coming up in me. You are strong. Yeah, you're supposed to be setting up the meetings. Yeah, you better hear me. You better hear me. You better hear me. If she ain't on, somebody tell her, come on, she'll go back and listen to it. I'm saying what I'm hearing in my spirit. I'm seeing this thing. It's my job to speak life into you. It's my job to speak it over you. And it shall come to pass. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we rejoice. We rejoice with our sister. We rejoice with everybody. This is your growing season. This is your grooming season. This is your growth season. You have sown, you have sown, and you have sown. It is harvest time. Some seeds were canceled by negative comments, negative confessions by people. And I get that. But God says, you know the process of seed time and harvest. You know how to sow my word in your spirit and cultivate it and protect it. Protect the soil of your heart. Protect the ground of your heart. Don't walk in bitterness. Don't walk in despair and defeat. Don't walk in anger. Don't walk in unforgiveness. God says, develop the culture of love in your household. As you develop the culture of love, be quick to forgive. Don't hold animosity against anybody. Be quick to be a blessing to somebody. He says that's going to unlock and break up the fallow ground of the hardness of your heart. And this is for everybody now, whoever needs to hear this. He says, whoever this is for, it'll break up the ground of your heart for the seed to be sown and to germinate properly. And you'll start seeing successes in your life like you've never seen before. God is talking about consistent conquest. He says, you are more than a conqueror. A conqueror is a person who has consistent conquest in their life. And he says, you are more than that. So this is a time, this is your winning season. This is your winning time. You've listened, you've dealt with enough loss. God is going to recompense what you lost. And it's going to come around greater and better and more developed than what you lost. And God is saying, if you can just believe me and trust me in this, that I'm going to begin to do some things through you and in you and watch this. And you're going to begin to build and you shall build and you shall build steadily and you shall build strong and have a firm foundation. And no matter what comes, no matter what winds blow, it won't fall down because it's built on a firm foundation. That's it. Firm foundation. And watch this. God also says management attract, watch this, attracts resources. When you start managing stuff right, more starts coming. When you start managing, the little more comes. More comes. More is coming to you. You better hear. You better. Are you hearing the words that are coming out of my mouth? More is coming to you. Brother, sister, more is coming to you. <laughs> and I already told you, God's going to give you what you can manage. So start managing it well. Start managing it well. We got to help develop some management. We're going to develop some management court with something to help you steward what you're doing. This is what you can possibly do with that. This is what you can do. This is how, listen, get stuff, time management. You can buy, buy books. Organization for Dummies. I bought those books. That stuff is good stuff in them. Show you how to manage stuff and business for dummies. How to start a LLC. How to start a listen. You better start. This stuff is out there. And take it step by step. You ain't got to try to figure out. Do I need to do this? If it work, it work. A principle, a law is an established principle that works for anybody that gets involved with it. Once you find the law of how a thing works, just get involved with it. It's like wet with the water. This is that. It is required of a suit that a man be found faithful.
In 1 Corinthians 4, it says that. Verses 1 and 2. I'm going to read this real quick. And this is, I'm going to end here. In verses 1 and 2, in 1 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2, the King James says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. See, we're stewards over the mysteries of God, the wisdom that God reveals. I'm a steward of the mystery of God. That means I got to know how to manage it properly. When God tells me to reveal something and release something, I release it. If you tell me, keep your mouth shut, don't say it, they ain't ready for it. I have to keep my mouth shut, no matter how much you want it. There's like a child asking for something. Give me that, give me that. Uh-uh, you can't handle it just yet. I give you what you can handle. Grow. Now you can handle meat. Get, get on the milk first. Develop. Now when it's time for solid food to be introduced, I'm going to start introducing it to you. But I might have to chop it up so that your body and your spirit can properly digest it while your mind is trying to comprehend what's being said. This is where you now, your job is to get the ground of your heart ready. Man, it's good. You, you, you can spend time in the presence of God, spending time praying in the spirit. Part of praying in the spirit will begin to now stir your spirit up, even beginning to open up the heart of, it's almost like tilling the ground of your heart to get ready for the seed of the word to even be introduced. And the Holy Spirit, because you stirring him up on the inside, you will begin to comprehend what's being said to you and you will pick up on stuff so much quicker and easier. Stuff just going to start coming to you. The spirit of wisdom is about to rest on this ministry and everybody connected with it. Uh, the spirit of wisdom is coming on you. For you to know it's going to be like common sense. Because you functioning in this with you better receive it now. You better receive it. The spirit of wisdom. To know what to do and how to do and how to apply this and how to put this together. And God will show you how to build that thing brick by brick. Because faithfulness is going to require you to stretch your faith out. Stretch. He says, believe me for this. Stretch. Stretch. It don't make sense in my head, but I sense it the peace in my heart. Stretch. Stretch. Because if you don't stretch, one thing I learned in the physical, if you don't stretch properly, your body will cramp up. Your muscles will get sore. You don't, your muscles don't recover as fast. And when you start stretching, you got to stretch. Stretch. Glory to God. Your faith has become stagnant. He says, stretch. Stretch. Whew. Who spring, spring forth, spring forth a well. Hey, not just within my soul and make me hope, but watch it. I feel the spring. I, I'm not, I'm not doing this as cliche. I'm feeling this, sensing this. I'm hearing this springing forth, a springing forth. Get ready for your springing forth. You're going to bud. You're going to grow. You're going to develop. I'm sprinkling. I'm sprinkling over the seeds in your heart, the water of my spirit and of my word. And you're going to begin to grow and you're going to begin to develop and you're going to start thinking better. You're going to start believing better. You're going to start doing better. You're going to start having better. You're going to start being better. Stop beating yourself up. God, why am I like this? I keep going back and forth. Stop it. Come out of that. It's self-pity. That stinks in God's nostrils. He says, who are you? Tell me who you are. Put me in remembrance of who you are. Glory to God. Man, I'm both Lord Jesus. Who you better get ready for boldness to come up in you. Just like Peter and Paul and them prayed for boldness. I think it was Peter. That, no, P Paul, he says, I pray for boldness that I might preach the gospel as bold as all the preach. You pray for the spirit of boldness to come on you. You about to go into meetings with a whole new swagger. Contract negotiations with a whole new swagger. You about to demand what you worth. Man, you shut up. I'm about ready to, man, you better hear me. You about to come into something in this season. Man, help me for I take off in the spirit. Lord Jesus, you about to get this thing. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. You going to take off now. You ain't about to take off. You taking off now. 
Who I hate the enemy, boy. If I sense it in my presence, self-loathing, fear belittling, mm -mm, don't you dare. Glory to God, man. I just think, just who is the righteous indignation that rises up in me? So y'all don't take it like I'm fussing at you. I hate that spirit behind it. Whatever's trying to hold you back. Oh, foul devil. Man, I tell you, you better. That's it. This is that. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. Listen, if you need to get born again, get born again now. <laughs> get born again now. Get born again now. Repeat this prayer after me now. If you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, do it now. Say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Christ the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I submit my life to you. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord. And I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name. Now say this. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. Fill me to overflowing. Empower me for success in life. And I receive it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Last but not least, if there's anybody out there, God is calling you to join this local fellowship. I want to clarify something. I'm going to take this moment to do it. What we, you know, I've done in the past, we talked about changing to from members to partnership. And I kind of broken it back up to members and partners and those things. But it was just on my heart this past week. I just to clarify some things. What we are considering, what we call our members, we call them partners. No longer is membership, it's partnership. You're partnering with this ministry to fulfill a call and a vision that God has called us to do, but also for your life. Now, in order to serve within the partnership of this ministry and to be a partner in order to serve, then you have to go through some classes and courses. But just if you just want to connect, if you're in another location and you can't get here, but you say, you know what? I like this thing. I like what you preach. I like I, I want to be connected some way, shape, fashion or form. If you want to become a partner with Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I want you to go ahead and connect with us right now. Do what God called you to do. Some of you have already done this, some of you, but sometimes when you officially make the decision and verbalize it and acknowledge, I commit to helping. Now, what does partnership entail? Let me, let me help you. One of the things, partnership is a covenant relationship of an exchange, strengths for weaknesses. We promise as a ministry to do certain things for you, to teach you the word of God, to provide resources for your spiritual development and enrichment. We promise to pray over you and your family, and your loved ones, because we have an intercessory prayer team that prays daily. You become a part, you come under that covering. We promise my wife and I to pastor you, to love you, to speak the word of God before you, to live our lives as an example and in a way that you can now be proud of and that you can submit yourself and your family to this anointing and this grace and this leadership. But we make a commitment to walk in integrity and godly and godliness in all that we do. Our commitment is, is to do what's right because it's right and do it right. Your job, what is your job? Your job is to pray for us, to help um, support the work and the vision that God has called us to do. He told me to, he, several years ago, go teach my people who they are. Our vision statement, it, it says it like this, as we manifest the love of God through active goodness and kindness, that's outreach. Our goal is to teach people their authority, rights, and privileges as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's discipleship. Pursuing their purpose and igniting a passion and fire for the kingdom of God, his way of doing things, how God does stuff. Therefore, revealing to the world the true sons and daughters of God 
and blazing with his glory, his manifested goodness. As you now come in, you help, you are blessed to be a blessing until all families of the earth have been blessed. Now you are being raised up and trained up how to be an effective witness and disciple of Christ. And now as a result, you apply it to your everyday life and it goes with you everywhere you go. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He goes where you are. You are the church, the body of Christ. And so now because of that, our job is to teach you, to develop you, to train you, to disciple you, and to release you to do the thing God created and called for you to do. If that's you and God says, you know what? If you feel that nudge in your heart and you make a decision, I want to I want to connect with this. Listen, we have our e-church as well, our e-members, people who are connected with us. They're not even here locally with us. But hey, if that's you and says, I want to be a part of this work and you've been listening consistently, you've been checking us out and you've been listening and God is laying on your heart. Make the decision. We'll have somebody from our connect team to get with you. Just send us an email. The information is coming up on your screen. You can send us an email at connect at spirit of fire dot us. Or simply, if you want to, you can uh, send us a direct message on our um, social media platforms. We have somebody from our connect team to reach out to you how to now connect with us. Now, listen, part of that is the anointing that you submit to is the anointing that you partake of. In other words, God's power and ability and grace that he has upon our lives, that he wants to release it in you to help you. God brought us back here for a reason. He empowered us. He equipped us. He anointed us to do this work. And he wants you to be a partaker. But watch this. Part of that partnership is you now utilizing your gifts, talents, and abilities to help push the vision. Whatever you make happen for another person, God will make happen for you. If you are faithful into that which is another man's, God is saying, watch, if you're not faithful into that which is another man's, he says, who will give you that which is your own? It's first, he gives you an atmosphere, a platform, an organization, a group, a body of believers for you to begin to now exercise your gifts, talents, and abilities. And the beauty of that is you have covering and protection and oversight and wisdom, and you have a place where you can develop and you can grow. And see, it's, it's a lot easier doing that versus trying to just make mistakes on your own. God says, I want you in a place of covering. And he wants every person needs a pastor, I believe that, to help and to develop you. And so God has called us to be a blessing to you. If that's you, we want you to message us so you can connect with us and we can get this thing rolling. Amen. All right, y'all. I don't know about y'all. I got excited about today. Um, one of the things I want to do this. I want to, um, at this time, we're going to honor God. Today is first Sunday. Um, and it's our communion Sunday. Oh, hmm? oh we're going to do it next week. Okay. Okay. I just got word. We're going to do it next week while we're in person as well. Okay. So we're doing it. Now we could do it today, but we're going to just do it next week. Normally we do it every first Sunday, but we'll be doing it, um, do next, doing next week's service. What I want you to do now is we're going to honor God in our giving. At this time, there's some information coming up on your screen as to how you can sow and plan into this ministry. Um, and we are believing with you. I was praying over you guys, I think just this morning or last night. Oh yeah, it was this morning um, as I was getting ready and just praying over each and every person who sows that God will begin to maximize your seed sown and that you're increasing, that you're growing, that you're prosper. We want to see you prosper. We want to see you grow. And we want to make sure that this ministry is good ground for you to sow into. And so we want to be good stewards over the resources. And we're in the process now. There's some things that we need to begin to purchase and possess for the vision, um, to have a better worship experience and to begin to do some upgrades and some things. And we cannot do that without your continued support. We just thank God, we trust God. And this one thing my pastor taught us years ago is he said it like this, and I want you to hear what I'm saying, the principle of it. You don't depend on the people's giving, you depend on your giving. And then you trust God for the rest. And so we as a ministry, we sow into other organizations and to support outreaches and things of that nature and to be a blessing to people. And your seed helps us to do that. And so we want to be a blessing to those in our community, to those around us. And so, you know, we do our yearly things that we do, annual stuff, uh, but we want to do more. We want to be a blessing to those in the community. And so even with that being said, as that information is coming up, this is a great segue. Um, just this morning, I released, and as you're um, looking at, you can scan the QR code to sow and to give, and you see the ways you can give. Um, I released a message this morning on our social media platform. Um, I know I did on my personal. I don't know if we did on the church's 
um, social media platform and we need to do that. But um, it's on my heart to begin. We want to gain uh, some momentum in this ministry. And what I did was I released a survey and we're going to set up one and release it out more formal um, to get some ideas from everybody that's out there. I want to get you all involved with this process. And so I think I posed about five questions as to ways that we could be a better service to our community, not, you know, our church community, our, you know, in reach, but also outreach. And so there's some questions on there. What I'm asking is this. I'm asking if everyone, because we want to get this out to the community at large. What I'm asking is, as you see those things, I want you to share that information, to share those questions, post it on your social media platform. And we want to gather this information and we're going to do an internal poll poll as to, you know, some ideas that you all have. Think outside of the box as to ways of outreach, ways we can be a blessing. Uh, we have. OK. Oh, oh, OK. Scan the QR code. I was just told scan the QR code that's come up and it'll take you to that information. Will it take you to the information? It'll say community outreach form. Please forget. And that's what you need to press, community outreach form. And press that, and it'll give you the questions. So I'm asking that if you can do that. Um, there may be some that's like, you know, if you're having any trouble with it, you can reach out to us or find it on our social media, um, those questions. I know I posted a video this morning, um, but we want to go ahead and, and get it to you. So um, we just want to get this. And if you can get this to me, and what, I, what I'm asking is, if you can post it on your social media platforms, to get a gauge from the community at large as to ways that we can be a blessing to them, things that they may be looking for, whether it's in person, locally, it may be virtually, but we want to, we want to think of different ways. And so what we want to get is ideas as to how to be a blessing. <clears throat> and so we're going to go ahead and gather that information. We're going to begin to break it down and begin to categorize those things and begin to start picking one thing at a time to start moving and making progress in different areas. We want to be a blessing, but we want to, don't want to do things. You know, we providing something that people don't even need or want. So we want to be a blessing to people. Um, and we want to help people and maximize our resources as much as possible. I want us to be great stewards over what God has entrusted us to do. Amen. So I'm asking for that. We want to bless you. We want to be blessed to be a blessing until all families of the earth have been blessed. I want to encourage you guys to find somebody to be a blessing to today. It's something when you are blessing to somebody else, it encourages you, it strengthens you. It gets you out of your problem that you're dealing with and you're focusing on somebody else. Then before you know it, stuff starts happening with you to start correcting the problem that you're going through. I'm telling you, I've seen God do these things. So God bless you. So at this time, as you've given, as you've sown, um, we just want to say thank you for your continued support. And so even as we begin to leave, I want to just give you the final blessing and benediction um, today. I pray that you got something out of this. I pray that you got something out of this. I want you to do this for me. I want you to do this for me. If you can do this for me, I want to increase our engagement even online. I want you to start sharing with me some takeaways. I want you to start posting some takeaways. You can go to our social media platform to, to some takeaways from the message today. And I listen, if something hits you, Post the quote on your platforms. Let people know. Encourage them. Strengthen them. Let them know. Before you know it, they'll be like, man, where you getting this from? This is good stuff. Then they come on board. Start hearing. Start listening. They want, listen, we want to make impact to as many people as we can. Amen. Praise God. Well, y'all, I'm out of time. Certainly not out of message. I declare great favor. I declare great grace. I declare God's goodness manifesting in your life. I declare that things will begin to heal, make rough places smooth, crooked places straight, that he'll give you peace. He says, I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. Start working on keeping your mind stayed on him by staying on his word, what he's promised you. The promises of God are yes and amen. Declare peace over yourself. Declare that all is well over yourself. And I declare it for you as well. God bless you guys. I love you so much. I'll see you next time. Peace.